We will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. History shows that language comparing human beings to animals is a way to justify violence against them. And that language is echoed all throughout Project 2025, the detailed plan for the next right-wing president to rescue the country from the grip of the radical left. In multiple instances, Project 2025's authors liken progressives to animals that need to be controlled. They compare progressives to beasts that need to be defeated. They they state their aim to defang and defund the woke culture warriors who have infiltrated every last institution in America. Defang like snakes. They want to muzzle woke propaganda at every level of government, the way one would muzzle a dog. History shows that when dehumanized language is repeated, people start seeing their fellow humans as subhuman. And that's used to shift public opinion and justify violence against vulnerable groups. Black people were referred to as beasts during slavery. Native Americans were called savages, wolves, and lice. During World War II, people of Japanese descent were called rats before their internment. David David Livingstone Smith, a professor and author of Less Than Human, told NPR, when people dehumanize others, they actually conceive of them as subhuman creatures. And that process can liberate them from inhibitions they have against treating other people like game animals or vermin or dangerous predators. It makes me afraid of what will happen if conservatives are able to enact Project 2025. Those on the right may feel even more justified in their abuse of marginalized communities if they see them as enemies and subhuman. And if civil and federal protections for those very same communities are rolled back, they would be even harder to stop.